What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Brian Daddy, coming at you with another video. Ashes of creation, right? Now, this footage in the background here is going to be a little bit of a culture shock from the last video you just saw. This video is from just about three months ago during the caravan update. The reason why I want it in the background is because we are going to talk about that in a little bit. The main topic of this video is just the gameplay in general. We all know if g gameplay is not strong in your game, it will not succeed. Period. End of discussion. Ashes of Creation is a PvX game. Players will naturally encounter both PvP and PvE. You know, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to just focus in on a singular PvE or PvP. So that means expect to do both. It, they're driving to really have both be prevalent in the world. And that's the defining principle of the game is to have it be PvX where PvE builds the world and PvP changes the world. Around 80% of the content in the game is open world. Think about that, 80%, that means there's gonna be open world dungeons, sieges, castles, cities, all of it. So there's not gonna be instanced combat, not much. So <laughs> you're gonna be able to affect everything, everything, okay? This is gonna be a massive world where your choices are gonna have consequence and healthy competition is gonna be an in instigator, you know, for friction and cooperation developing alliances, all that kind of stuff. So that's part of what the design is. And there won't be any PVE or PVP servers. So for some people that might be a deterrent. And I would recommend that if you don't want a PVP, this game is probably not for you. So let's jump into what I was going to talk about, which is let's just talk about the PVP side of things first. So the player versus player combat is a catalyst for change. And it's intended to be meaningful and range from many different things such as sieges, caravans, guild wars, and naval PvP, which we'll talk about that later, but that sounds like something that's going to be pretty awesome. I've never done a naval PvP kind of a game, but I think a majority of the players will experience PvP through sort of objective-based battlegrounds, and that is what I've just said, which is the sieges, the caravans, and the guild wars, and the naval PvP, and so like, usually there are death penalties when you die, but Death penalties will not be implemented when you're in those opt-in PvP events, which is a good thing. And there's also, you know, there's also reasons for players to engage in PvP combat in the open world. Uh, there is a PvP flagging system and a corruption system for that. We will talk more about that in a separate video as well. So go ahead and stay subscribed and hit that like button if you'd like to see me discuss that in a future video. Uh, the risk of gaining corruption, though is expected to deter a vast majority of players from griefing, and but it also doesn't mean that you're not gonna see it. You're gonna see players definitely randomly killing other players. It's gonna happen. The flagging system is supposed to combat it. Um, also as well, the archetypes such as tank and bard, when we talk about the classes section, is they are going to be viable in PvP. They're not just kind of due to the design philosophy of each class is going to be naturally strong against certain other classes, but there's not going to be one class that fits all. So that is also good news as well. Now let's go ahead and talk about the caravans here, which we are going to see in the background here. Stephen Sharif is going to develop and deploy one. So caravans create an objective-based PvP event in an open world that players can choose to attack, defend, or ignore via a UI window. As you can see above here, Steven is entering an area where he can summon his caravan. Players that choose to attack or defend the caravan will be flagged as combatants in the flagging system. And the UOA notification will pop up for a player if they want to join or attack or defend. It will say the name of the player's caravan, which is good. And once you have registered as a defender or an attacker, you cannot switch. There is no switching, so your choice is final. The proximity radius for the notification of the caravan events can be increased or decreased based on the components you know that you attach to your caravan and their progression within the highway the highway man system. There's also going to be visual hints relating to the cargo that's being transported in the caravan, but you won't be able to see the exact contents even if there's a skin because a lot of players have skins that they've bought on the store, you're still going to be able to see that there's cargo in there. Also, on the caravan itself, components can be individually destroyed by directional attacks against the caravan, and all components are destroyed if the caravan is destroyed. Um, some defensive abilities may be effective against blocking projectiles from hitting the caravans. If you're a tank, I know there are some abilities that might be able to do that. Uh, basic attacks will not slow down the caravan, but certain slowing abilities might be able to do so. 
players or mounts trying to block caravans will be pushed out of the way. So if you try to get in its path, you're just going to get pushed out of the way, which is good. We don't want players stopping it from moving it to its destination or grieving it in that kind of a way. Uh, if a caravan's driver is killed or otherwise removed, then any player will be able to drive the caravan for a period of 10, uh, 15 to 20 minutes before the caravan despawns and becomes a wreckage. A caravan will persist in the world for a period of 5 to 10 minutes from the time the owner logs out or is disconnected from the server. So just a little info on what happens in the event that a player gets out of said caravan. And there you can see, you've got Stephen Sharif's uh, fancy little caravan with the metal spokes and the two horses. It's pretty awesome. And then you also have the other one in the background there is more of a wooden kind of basic caravan. <laughs> Alrighty, let's talk about another PvP event. The castle sieges in the background here you also have uh, another video that was taken about two years ago guilds participate in castle sieges in order to capture and occupy one of the five guild castles in ashes of creation so these sieges do not happen very often and when they do uh you will be very happy that you've captured a castle sieges can only occur once a month within the server prime time window and that is subject to change again this is alpha footage so they could change that but once you've captured a castle you will have it for a month as a guild that is pretty awesome the minimum goal is that he wants there to be battles of 250 to 250 so 250 players on one side and 250 on the other but he's hoping to be even bigger than that like they've got aspirations to make these battles really big and insane and that's what players want is to have that epic battle of yes we need to capture this town and it is sick right and the amount of engineering and work that has to go into that is crazy and i don't i don't even want to know what they have to do <laughs> to do that because it is awesome for sure and there will be uh some systems that mimic some of the mechanics of sieges but there won't be practice sieges so it you're gonna have to kind of get used to it right if you're only gonna be doing these once a month you're gonna have to really practice on like how to handle these situations there may be instance locations within otherwise open world castles there will be specific groups that can participate in, in small short duration like objective based battles that will affect the overall outcome of the siege so essentially picture a castle siege being a war and then picture within the war having battles okay and like as you can see here steven's in a flying mount it's not going to be very common either but there's going to be big dragons you can kill that'll affect the battle right now you can see here boom he's up flying towards this fire dragon and there's just <laughs> the amount of work and uh, it's awesome i i just can't say anything i get loss of words because it's so awesome the fact that you can only do the battle once a month is definitely going to is going to make some people a little upset. Hey, once a month might be too much for some people. I think we need the sieges more because it seems like one of the, the main cool contents of the game. I think the battles, uh, but I, I say that we might need more, but also you have to remember that there's going to be, what is it, five guild castles? And you can only have a battle once a month at each one. So technically you could have a battle every week, depending on what when that uh, castle was captured. So... That is one thing that you have to think about. And I'm, I don't know if multiple guilds can, or I don't know if one guild can control multiple cities. Let me find out and look on the wiki here. Uh, in the first three weeks that a guild uh, occupies a castle, they will need to level up each of their castle nodes to village stage through questing. Each of the three castle nodes have a siege against it at the end of each of these three weeks. The fourth week is the declaration week, and that is where the guilds have the opportunity to lay down their declaration flag or signed up as a defender of the castle. So that's when the battle would commence depending on how well a guild defends their castle nodes results in better defenses for the castle different siege weaponry will grant the attackers the ability to destroy walls doors and sections of the castle in order to gain access to the inner keep area and when castles change hands following a siege some taxes stay with the castle and some stay with the guild Alrighty, let's talk about node sieges. So node sieges are going to be a little bit different from castle sieges, um, but it enables players to destroy nodes starting at village stage 3, and this paves the way for new development to access to a locked content in the surrounding nodes. So basically due to this dynamic, there will be political strife and intrigue play will play an important role, you know, in building every node and the whole structure of the world and sieging nodes will not be an easy task for the attackers cities and metropolises will have a considerable defensive advantage they've already stated that the farther cities get along the harder it will be to attack them and i think that's good that's a good design and there will be some uh, systems that make some of the mechanics of sieges but there won't be practice sieges like i've said before 
So node sieges are going to kind of be like castle sieges, but it's going to be attacking a city instead of one of the five major cities. Another PvP event is Guild Wars, which is an objective-based PvP event between two guilds. It can be declared at any time, but the objectives will only spawn during the server prime time. Players can kill each other any time, but, you know, it's only going to count towards the objectives during those prime times. And the actual objectives are intended to dynamically spawn based on various conditions that exist. What those conditions are, I do not know, but basically there's going to be objectives for the guilds to complete in order to win the war. And depending on many factors, those guilds are going to have to complete it to win. So guild wars could be interesting. I'm um, looking forward to those. Those could be definitely... Uh, not the big giant battles of castles or nodes, but like something that's more interesting and kind of develops relationships for sure. Uh, another PvP activity is kind of hunting grounds, which I'm guessing, I don't know too much information about hunting grounds, but I will say it's more of an open world kind of situation where there's probably going to be resources and maybe certain rare animals and monsters within that area that players are going to have to PvP and fight over because it doesn't happen often. That's kind of my guess. I don't know much, too much information about it, but Hunting Grounds is another PvP activity, along with Naval PvP as well. Again, I don't know too much about the Naval PvP. I do know that it's going to be more about open world and that will use the flagging system with Naval PvP, unlike the other systems that I spoke about. Um, so when you open the open seas, you will be notified, hey, you're going to get flagged and you'll get flagged as purple. And then if you start killing players, you'll get turned into a red player. Again, I'll go more in depth to the flagging system in another video. Uh, players entering the open seas will have better resources in more abundance to compensate for the added level of risk. So as you go further out in the sea, you're taking more risk, but you're also gaining a better reward, which is the design it should have. But yeah, you just know that you could get PvP'd and killed out in the open seas. <laughs> um, another PvP event is arenas, which is going to be an instance PvP scenario, which I'm sure many of people know kind of what that is if you played world of warcraft or any sort of other big pvp game is you queue up there's going to be one solos and trios and probably five man arenas is what they believe there might be more and basically yeah you're just going to queue up fight against people and there'll probably be a rating system and depending on your rating and their rating and you'll fight each other they've said that they don't really want to balance the classes there there is going to be a rock paper scissors formula so some classes are going to beat others there's not going to be one class fits all, but we'll see. That takes a lot of work. That takes a lot of balancing, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle that challenge. All right, now that we discussed PvP side, let's just kind of dive into the PvE side of things here. So the PvE system is really kind of reliant around the nodes. This whole game kind of just relies around the nodes. And what falls into that is the quests, the dungeons, the raids, and the monster coins. PvE content adapts to the development of the world, so you're not always going to have the same thing, right? Some servers are going to have vastly different worlds and activities and quests than, than you, so not every guide is going to be perfect, right? So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really cool. So the quests in Ashes of Crea Creation are actually divided into three categories, thus being events, tasks, and narrative quests. All three categories of quests will, will be available from a variety of local hidden and discovered sources, such as bulletin boards and uh, quest givers, you know. So they're going to be all over the world, which is good. That's what you want to see. All right, let's talk about dungeons. Dungeons in Ashes will range in size and be mostly open world, with 80% of the world being open world and 20% being instant dun instanced dungeons and uh, different tiers and types of dungeon content will be more or less relevant to specific groups or class compositions so you will have to be ready for that as well and dungeon difficulty will increase the further a player ventures into the dungeon so it's meant to be the farther you get the more mobs there are the more mechanics you know maybe the terrain and then the environmental dangers will increase as you go deeper which is sick that's awesome you know it's like all right cool you ventured in and now you're about to get to the real stuff <laughs> um, another activity is raids obviously so we've just covered quests dungeons raids raids are going to be based on trigger events more than traditional systems uh, traditional world bosses will be kind of spawned in and as well through events world bosses are going to spawn at various locations at various times and bosses may also spawn based on predicates that can be met at any time such as when a story arc or event begins somewhere in the world some world bosses and elite mobs will path and roam throughout the world Alrighty, i want to thank you guys for tuning in i know i kind of was a little long-winded there but yeah i went over 
everything that is the gameplay within Ashes of Creation being a PVX game. I went over the PvP and all the systems within that, the PvE and all the systems within that. It looks really promising. As you can see here in the background footage, this is two-year-old footage as well from, uh, looks like Steven doing some alpha killing a monster footage here with a mage. This was a little bit of a longer video. We went over all the gameplay features in PvP and PvE. This game's gonna be massive. It's gonna have a lot of activities and I think it's gonna be freaking awesome. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, what topic are we gonna do next? I'm not sure, but you'll find out tomorrow. All right, have a good one.